Good morning, everybody. It's Tom Christie back in the workshop, and this will be session four of carving a Drake canvas back, cork bodied, magnum size hunting decoy. And we've got the head shaped up. In this session, we'll focus on shaping the body, hopefully, get the tail installed. I'm also going to hollow this cork decoy out, so I'll show you how to do that as well. But the main focus of today's video is let's get the shape of this decoy right, and I'll show you a couple of different ways of achieving that. Hey, thank you for all the comments and suggestions. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do that. That helps me out, and that way you'll get any new content I post, you'll be aware of it. Let's get going. Okay, I've got the decoy right now. I put the keel on the decoy just to have something to put in the my bench vise. I did get a comment, hey Tom, this these are great, but what if I don't have uh, all the carving equipment, the grinding equipment that you show? And I think it's a great point, especially for carvers starting out. It's a pretty substantial investment. So I did want to talk about this morning, especially for a cork decoy, you can use a simple draw knife. These don't cost very much. A file and some sandpaper to shape up a cork body, uh, basically by just slicing off pieces of the cork and rounding with the draw knife, like this. Just go at it slowly and kind of in a slicing motion. And then you can use just a, a wood file to finish the process. I'm just showing the basics, so I'm not trying to finish up the decoy, but I did want to show you this approach that doesn't take a lot of investment in equipment. And then a good piece of 80 grit sandpaper to smooth the cork down after you've shaped it. And in pretty quick order, uh, you can get your cork body decoy shaped up with not much investment in tools. And I think that is important. Uh, you can find these tools on things like uh, MDI, Woodcrafter Supply. There are a lot of different supply houses out there for carvers. So take a look at that. I am going to go ahead and grind on this body for the sake of this demonstration for those of you that do have grinding equipment and we'll do that next. Okay, before I start grinding, I uh, marked the head position with the amount of turn that I want on the head and we can get that out of the way, but you can see I have a guideline here so that as I begin grinding, particularly around the breast, I'm not taking off too much material. And in this first uh, grinding sequence, we're just gonna focus on rounding things up. A lot of beginning carvers, I think, are cautious and they end up with a little bit of a square profile. You really want, especially from the back, a nice round profile on your decoy. So we'll get, I'm gonna use a saber tooth burr fine this yellow is the fine uh, tooth because this really takes off material fast. So you don't need much on cork in terms of tooth to remove material. So we'll get started on, on just rounding things in general and then we'll come back and do some layout work because I do want to do a little definition on the side pockets and the cape area on this bird. Okay, I'm going to speed the video up two times, just so you're aware of that. And uh, this will go a little faster that way. But you can see I'm starting at the breast, shaping that area. And there's a little bit of a groove that runs down off of the back and defines the breast and separates it a little bit from the body. And I'm just working to that guideline that I gave myself on the head and neck position and rounding things off. You can see this cork dust is really messy and you need good dust collection equipment or be outside or some way to 
contain the cork dust because it, it does get messy. And I'm just working to round things in general. We don't want any flat spots uh, to speak of left on the decoy. Here's a little further along. I'm rounding the breast area. Then I'm going to flip it over and work on that, uh, just rounding a little bit that bandsaw line that we put uh, to put a little bit of a bevel on that cedar bottom board. So we just need to smooth that out, tie it into the body. And again, you can see I'm working on flat spots, just taking off anything that's flat. You can overdo this. You don't want a triangle body, but in general, we're just rounding in this stage of the carving. I'm just going to shorten the video here. Hopefully you get the point. We're just generally rounding the body at this point, and now we'll take stock. All right, I've got things generally rounded off. Now I'm going to take my file, my wood file, and just kind of finish the job. You know, as I was grinding on that, I was thinking the draw knife and the file probably generates a lot less dust than the uh, grinding. So hopefully if you're grinding pork, you have good dust collection equipment, wear a good respirator to protect your lungs because the cork is really dusty and gets everywhere. So I'm just going to finish rounding, trying to get rid of all flat spots. So that's kind of a goal. We don't want any box-like shapes left when we're done. Let me turn this around so you can see the shape from the back. We're trying to go for a nice rounded shape. We're going to round it further with definition of the side pockets. A little bit on the cape. I'm going to leave this pretty sturdy back here and we're just going to paint on detail. No carving details on this gunning decoy. All right, now that we have kind of general rounding done, I want to do some layout work. First dimension I want to establish is from the front of the breast to this back area of the cape. And uh, I'm going to use my calipers or my dividers to know where that spot is. Put a mark there because the marks in the cork kind of disappear. Then I want to establish how wide we are at the shoulders here and the side pockets. Go to the decoy and lay that out. And I'm using the divider so that I get things symmetrical from side to side. We need a dimension on the side pocket in back, top of the side pocket back here, comes in quite a bit. And then we need a position up here, center line. Making a mark. Okay. And then I, I like to get a dimension from the back of the cape to the front corner here and just do a gut check on where that's located. on both sides. Now I've got enough guidelines to get my top position sketched in. Back to the cape, from the shoulder to the side pocket, and that meets up with this dimension down here. A little indentation in the cutout. Same from this side. And 
like that. So we've got our top pattern transferred on. Now I want to do the side profiles. I'll use the calipers for that because it's a little easier to get under the decoy with the calipers. And that side pocket is going to be this high from the side. Get a dimension at the shoulder there, or what I'm calling the shoulder, up here. That drops down quite a bit. And then it goes back up a little bit, not too much here, up in the corner. I need a better pencil, but... So I'll do that on the other side as well, and then we can do some grinding to define the cape and the side pocket area. Okay, I've sped up the film again, and uh, I'm using a three-quarter inch cylindrical uh, saber tooth burr fine tooth. And I'm following my guidelines from the top down, and then also from the side view, and using that cylindrical shape to get in there and kind of establish the separation between the side pocket and the feathers of the back. And then I'll begin rounding the side pocket and also the back feathers. Just use your pattern guidelines and make sure you don't go too deep on this. Now I'm gonna start rounding and softening those lines now that I know I'm at the proper depth from the top and from the side. And I'll just keep working back and forth on this across that separation line between the side pocket and the feathers of the back and rounding things off. I'm doing the same thing on the opposite side, beginning to shape that up. You can see how much dust is generated. Even with a dust collection system, my arm is getting covered. Uh, you just can't always have the right angle on the decoy as you're carving to, to suck all of that material down into the dust collection system. So uh, wear a respirator when you're doing this. Now before I get too far along, I like to stop and check my symmetry. Uh, so using the calipers again, make sure that looks pretty good. That looks about where I want it. Let's check this lower dimension near the front. I can go a little bit lower on that dimension, so I'll just give myself a mark there on that side. Same over here, I didn't go quite low enough. And that happens a lot. I mean, when you're carving, there's a lot of dust going on, you're taking material off. You don't want to go too deep, too fast. So I'm going to go back, deepen that on both sides a little bit. Looks like my side pockets are generally in good shape. Do a quick check on this dimension on the shoulders. You just see if I'm in the ballpark on that and it looks like I'm right on on that dimension. Let's check near the back end. Pretty good. So I'll finish up that carving and then come back. Um, we're also going to dig in the cape area here and put a little bit of a concaved area in the back. I sped up the video. Now I'm using that cylindrical burr to go down and Make sure that dimension hits my pattern. And then I'll work back and forth to round that off again. Now 
Now I'm going to dig in that cape area and I'm just, the cape is actually left raised because it lays over the feathers of the back. So I'm digging from both sides, or I call it digging, I'm carving from both sides. And then I'm going to bevel that a little bit. This is pretty subtle, but it just gives a little more shape to the back. And I like to have a little concaved area in the center of the back to give it a little more shape. Now I'm going to switch to the half inch sanding drum and I've got 120 grit paper on there and I'm going to use that sanding drum to just go over all my carving and smooth things out. Just kind of an initial pass to remove the carving grinding lines and just smooth things out. Okay, I didn't want too much sanding video, but I'm finishing that up with the drum sander, and now I'll take a look at what else needs to be done. Now I'm just going to go back to the 80 grit sandpaper. I'm just kind of hand sand to finish up the shaping. A little easier to get into corners and stuff with a piece of hand paper. And smooth things out overall. And get ready for hollowing out the cork. By the way, I did not undercut. I normally undercut this area on like a, a decorative decoy. But I like to leave as much contact with the water as possible on a gunning decoy so just a little detail there but that's going to be in the water anyway so you're not going to see it once it's in flotation here's a back view of the bird you can see again no flat spots here here everything is kind of nicely rounded and that's what we want Same from the front. Okay, now that I have the general shape, I'm gonna remove the screws holding the keel in place temporarily. And we can separate the pieces. And I wanna leave quite a bit of cork. You know, cork is fairly strong, but still we don't want to take too much structure out of the decoy. So if it takes a beating, we don't want this to crack. I want to keep my screw holes in mind here. I probably will leave some cork around that so that the screws, once they penetrate the bottom board, they go up inside of cork. There's no pathway for a leak to get inside there. You don't have to do that uh, because I'm going to also glue the bottom board on. I am just uh, think it's, it's a good idea to leave material around the screws if at all possible. So we're gonna leave about, in this case, maybe an inch and use the Forstner to dig out some of this material not going to go overboard. You can see this is thin back here, so I can't do any hollowing back there. I might as well just skip that area. And I'll just leave that screw material intact. Up here, we're good. We're going to take some material out of the middle. Normally, I retain the uh, piece of scrap that I cut off the top because it it makes a nice nesting fixture to keep everything flat. I threw that away and uh, that was a mistake, but I can freehand this. I'll just be very cautious. The cork material is not very hard to drill, so I'll just be very careful. Keep my hands away from the Forstner bit.
I'm going to speed up the video here again, and uh, you don't need to watch all of this, but um, you just have to carefully go at this and gauge how deep you need to go to still leave about an inch of material completely around the shell of the upper half of the decoy here so that strength is maintained. So I'll just show you portions of this as I hollow this out. You just have to be careful you don't punch through. That's the, the danger here. You don't want a hole in the decoy, obviously. Here's just a quick shot of that hollowed out area. And I wanted to mention the other reason to leave material around this particular area is I'm using a dowel as you remember, so we need to leave strength around that area. And it, my screw snafu that we saw earlier also says that dowel is gonna end up right there. So when I put the bottom board on, drive that keel screw home, I'll drill that dowel out, but it'll have nice firm foundation in that dowel. And this gives us a lot of surface area around the decoy to create a nice seal between the cork and the bottom board. And we'll do that next. If you've seen my other video on hollowing out a decoy, you'll recognize this process. I like to put a, a little brad in about three different locations. And these become locators when we're gluing the pieces together. The pieces tend to want to slide back and forth and sideways. And these just help locate things during that gluing process. I just drive those brads in and snip the heads off. You can do that in three or four different locations. And in this decoy, I'm putting the brads in the cedar uh, and then pressing the cork down on top of them for that positive location. Just make things are sure things are lined up and press it down. And then that gives us kind of a position when we're gluing. I, I also put some registration marks in, in place so we kind of know where the halves should go during the gluing process. Okay. Okay, a little disclaimer as I move into sealing up this decoy. I'm going to use DEFCON two-part five-minute epoxy to glue my halves together. I use that on a regular basis. There may be better choices for hunting decoys. I don't make that many hunting decoys to use uh, anymore, but um, there, there's a lot of passion around the adhesives that you should use and a lot of experience out there more than mine on the best choices. I've seen people use uh, West Systems is a good epoxy system, waterproof. I've seen Gorilla Glue in combination with waterproof tight bond wood glue. That's an, another good option. I'm just telling you, I'm going to use DevCon, and I do know people that use uh, five minute epoxy DevCon on their cork decoys that are used on a regular basis, and they have had great success with it. So, okay, I've got my DevCon mixed up, and now I have to work quickly because it is a five minute set time. And I'm going to spread it very liberally, especially on the cork surface, because there are voids in the cork that we want to make sure we're getting sealed up. By the way, some people are probably wondering, why do you hollow out a cork decoy? I just do it to further lighten the decoy. I think it helps flotation. You don't have to do that. You can use a solid body cork decoy and just skip this step if you prefer.
And I'm not going to talk much because I have to move fast. We want enough glue on here to fill all the voids and excess glue that when we squeeze the body sections together, it's going to fully fill that seam and have some excess come out. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I gave myself a guideline there of about an inch to match up with the cork. Making sure there are no dry spots in the mating surfaces. Once I have glue on both sections then, we're gonna move quickly to create that seal and press it down so the glue is, is coming out. Sorry for the interference there. And now I'm using my highly technical lead-filled coffee can to put pressure down on the upper section and squeeze the glue out and then I'm using a rag just to remove the excess glue and assure that there are no gaps. While that's drying, I mixed up a little more DevCon and I'm gonna spread that inside the tail area on the cork up and down. Make sure I've got good coverage, put it on the mating surface. Go ahead and press that in place. Plenty of glue. And we're going to come back later and I need to shift that over a little bit. We're going to come back later and fill in these side gaps. So I'm not too worried about having glue there or getting a complete fill on that right now. Now I've got more two-part epoxy mixed up in the DEF CON and I'm going to make sure I get plenty down in this dowel hole for the head position. Go ahead and anchor that down. I want to do the same thing in the head dowel hole. Make sure there's plenty of glue in there for attaching the head. And I'm going to put glue on the head. Make sure I have a good amount of glue Again, covering all the pores in the cork. Get my dowel glued up. Also, the back of the neck just forms an anchor position back there as well. And really rock this back and forth to get a good seal. And I'm going to use paper towel to wipe off the excess. I'd rather have too much 
rather than too little. That looks good, and now I'm just gonna maintain pressure on this head for five minutes to make sure I'm getting a good bond as that epoxy cures. Okay, we've got our decoy assembled now. There's one more thing I wanna do today, and that is mix up a little cork epoxy mixture and fill these areas um, on the side of the tail and then we'll let everything dry. Okay, mixing up some of the DevCon again. And then I'm going to use that cork dust that we saved from the bandsaw. Kind of work that into the DevCon. and it makes kind of a cork DevCon putty. And I'm gonna push that in, make sure there's no gaps behind this. Also using some of that material to just make sure I've got a good seal on the back of the neck here, where the neck meets the cork body. This can have a tendency to sag, so just make sure you keep working it until it sets. All right, we got a lot accomplished today, and I think we'll call that a wrap on session four of carving a Magnum Drake canvas back gunning decoy. I'm gonna let this dry overnight, and in session five, we'll be focusing on finishing the body and getting it ready for sealing. I also want to do a little bit of filler around the neck joint so that we hide that and you won't see it in the in the completed bird. And then we'll be talking about keel attachment, weighting, flotation, all that to come. Thanks for tuning into the channel. I really appreciate the comments and suggestions. And until next time, Tom Christie signing off. Good carving to all of you.